Hey guys, as promised today we are gonna mod the Aco 5075S. So we are gonna do a uh, tape mod, which is gonna reduce the rattle coming from the PCB. We're gonna do a cotton mod, which is essentially filling the uh, the housing with cotton. It's supposed to dampen the sound coming from the keyboard. And then finally we're gonna lube the switches. So let's get right to it. As with every mod ever, we're going to start by removing the keycap, so take this tool, keycap puller, just pull them out. I think maybe I should unplug the keyboard first here. Yeah. So now with the knob and the keycaps out of the way, we can start the process of opening this thing so I don't think it has any screws I think you just pull it apart do I need pliers for this? Or? What a struggle this is, holy! Uh, at this point I'm gonna try and pry it open with this thing. I'm really struggling to open this and I'm not a weak guy. Dude. This thing is so hard to open, what the hell? I've probably broken it in 10 different places at this point. Finally, that was hard. No wonder I couldn't find any teardown videos of the 5075S online, because it is a struggle to get this thing open. This is a this is a carpenter's tool. This is not a precision tool. Okay, so as you can see, there's a top housing. I have I have absolutely mauled this thing trying to remove it. I just hope the keyboard still works. Okay, so now that I've calmed down a little bit, let's try and go the rest of the way. Let's try and remove the PCB. So actually, it does not look like there's a lot of space down here to fit. And much cotton or any other dampening material just remove this so as you can see there's no battery and then there's there's already this silicon it's already the silicon dampener so on on other keyboards you wouldn't you wouldn't find this there'd be a lot of empty space and then the batteries here or in the in the case of my other keyboard there's two batteries so I that was the area that I filled with cotton. On this thing, you already have this silicon dampener. So you only really have this tiny bit of space to add extra dampening if you want. Okay, so for the tape mod, you need some masking tape or any other non-conductive tape. Uh, preferably also something that won't leave a lot of residue if you were ever to remove it. So 
That's why electrical tape is not recommended because the uh, adhesive on that kind of tape is really gunky and if you ever remove it, it's, it leaves some residue and then a pair of scissors obviously. So what you want to do is just put a few layers of tape over the back of the PCB. This is just to stop it from rattling. Just gotta make sure not to cover the wire port, this one. And I like to overlap the layers. Just a little bit, not too much. There you go. I actually forgot to leave a space for the switch. So this is the switch. Then I leave that exposed. And there you go. Now I just gotta make sure that the keyboard still works after all the manhandling. Perfect. LEDs all still working. Okay, so now this is just some cotton that I took from the medicine cabinet. I'm gonna put just a tiny amount into the housing for some additional dampening of the sound. I don't want to put too much because I don't want it to deform the PCB so I'm just gonna try to evenly spread a thin layer of cotton as best I can You gotta be careful to leave the switch exposed. Okay, let's try to put the PCB back on. I hope this is easier than getting the case off. I really don't want to have to open this keyboard again once I close it back up. So I can definitely feel the resistance from the cotton when I try to push down on the PCB. I, I want to make sure I haven't forgotten anything because it was a real struggle getting this thing open. So I want to make the one time I opened it count. Once again, test. So 
So now we're done with two of the three mods that I mentioned at the start of this video. What's left is lubing the switches. This is last because it's the most tedious mod. So to do this, we've got to remove all of the switches first. I'm gonna need our switch puller. Uh, to remove a switch from the keyboard, just clip on the north and south sides of the switch and pull up. Just like that. So this is the switch and we're gonna have to take this apart and lube them one by one. Okay, now that's all done, let's get the keyboard out of the way and get ready to lube these switches. So for lubing switches, we're gonna need the lube itself. This is Crytox 205, a very popular grease-based lubricant. You only need about 5 grams for 82 switches. We need the brush with which to apply the lube. We need a stem holder when we're because uh, the tiny stem is hard to hold for my Cosimodo hands, so we need this uh, precision tool. And finally, we need a switch opener. So the Aco switches need a kale style switch opener. This is the one with these two flat. Uh, protrusions on either side of the hole in the middle. So the first step in lubing a switch is opening it of course. So we'll take our switch opener and then align it so that the flat protrusions are to the left and right of us. Then we'll take a switch. Um, so if you look at the switch you'll see that there are two sides where the upper housing extends further down so this, this is one of those sides. You see that the, uh, the transparent plastic is almost to the bottom of the bottom housing. And then on the adjacent sides, that's not the case. It's only the upper housing only extends to about half of the switch. And then on the opposite side, it extends again almost to the bottom. So the sides that extend almost to the bottom of the switch are the ones that you want to put on top of the flat protrusions on the switch opener. So, since the protrusions are to the left and right of us, we're also going to put the switch in this orientation so that the switch opener is pushing up, pushing up on uh, those extended plastic parts. And then with a very small gentle amount of force, we push down. And the switch should just pop open. Yeah, let's try that again with another switch. So now that we've disassembled the switch, we can see the four parts. The spring, the stem, the upper housing, and the lower housing. So the primary reason of lubing your switches is to reduce the amount of scratch, scratching and noise that you get when any of these four parts rub against each other. So it makes sense that the philosophy of lubing is to apply lube to the parts of these components that rub against each other. So we'll start with the bottom housing and apply just a teeny tiny bit of lube to the side. You may have read online that when it comes to lubing, the principle is less is more because it's easy to add more lube but it's really difficult to remove lube. You'd have to wash the whole switch. This is grease based so it's not, it's not easy to remove at all. And we'll just add a little bit more to the switch assembly. So next the stem, uh, lube the side, both sides, 
and in the middle you don't want to see the white lube you just want to see a thin sh sheen okay then we'll do the top and bottom the spring And then finally the top entrance to the top part. Now that these are lube, we'll put the switch back together. Uh, so bottom housing. and the top housing so the side of the top housing with the space needs to go over the switch mechanism there you go so this is lubed this is unlubed Do you hear a difference? Now that I've glued this switch, I'm gonna put it back into the keyboard just, just so I don't lose track of which ones I've already looped. So, take our keyboard. And I'm also gonna start at the top and work my way down so that I can keep track of which one, which switches were looped earlier. So if I get lazier or better in my technique I can tell by the sound of the difference in the sound on the top switches and the bottom switches. And that's the last switch. That took a while. I suggest if you're gonna lube uh, 82 switches like this you set aside a whole morning to do it. Um, I actually did this in batches of 8 or 10 throughout the day today okay so just gotta put the keycaps back on okay so all of the keycaps are back on and the RGB is working I also went to one of those keyboard test websites just to make sure that all of the keys are working um, for a short time the spacebar wasn't registering presses I guess that must be some kind of break-in period with the loop because it's the last uh, switch that I looped uh, and now it's fine after a few minutes. So it's time for the after mods sound test. I'm excited. Let's go. So did you notice a significant difference in the sound between modded and unmodded? There obviously was. Um, I feel that in the unmodded keyboard, uh, you can definitely hear the scratches when the key is being pressed. Whereas when it's modded or lubed more specifically, uh, you only hear the sound when the key bottoms out. So this gives it a more poppy quality as opposed to the scratchy quality uh, before before looping. Um, 
As for the overall sound of the keyboard, I feel like it's not really possible to say which mod contributes to which um, quality. I feel like the modded version definitely has a deeper sound than the unmodded version and it's a lot less scratchy. Overall, I would say modding this keyboard has been very much worth it. Uh, even though I spent, I must say, something like 2 or 3 hours just lubing, uh, just lubing the switches. I'm very happy with the end result. Uh, some of you might have noticed that I didn't do anything for the stabilizers. So on the spacebar, the big shift, enter, and backspace. I didn't uh, mod the stabilizers in any way. I'm gonna do this in another video because I feel that uh, modding the stabilizers takes a bit more work and a bit more technical proficiency than the other mods that I did for this keyboard right now. So I hope this video has helped you to decide on whether you want this keyboard, these keycaps, uh, or whether it's your, whether or not you think it's worth it to mod a uh, keyboard, any keyboard really. If you got value from this video, please like and subscribe or leave a comment. Uh, it will help me to keep making videos for this channel in the future. Okay, so all that's left now is to do a quick rundown of where I got all this gear from Shopee. I'll leave links in the description below. Uh, the keyboard itself was from acogear.ph. The keycaps were from yongcho.ph. The, the tools that I used for modding were from 147 CompServe. Uh, so this included the tweezers, the stem holder, the brush, the Crytox grease and the masking tape, also the switch opener. The switches I actually got from Lazada, from the Akko official store. So I don't understand why the Lazada Akko store has these switches, but the Shopee store does not. Uh, so that's it, I'll see you in future videos. Uh, it might be a few weeks before I revisit this keyboard. I had a really hard time opening it and I wanna give myself some time before I have to go through that again. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next time.